Bhagavad Gita, verse 2.45 O Arjuna, give up being influenced by the three binding forces of material nature that are described in the Vedas and become established in transcendence, which is beyond them. Be free from all dualities, such as honor and dishonor, and do not be concerned about inquiring assets or maintaining what you have. Become situated in spiritual existence by using the intelligence awarded by me. Sar Ardavarshni Becoming detached from the means to attain the four materialistic pursuits of religiosity, dharma, wealth, artha, sense gratification, karma, and liberation, moksha, take exclusive shelter of bhakti yoga. With this intention, Sri Bhagavan is speaking this verse beginning with Trigunya, because the Vedas predominantly illuminate the subject matters of karma, jnana, etc., which are composed of the three modes of material nature, otherwise called the gunas. The meaning of the word trigunya is formed by adding the suffix syan. In the Vedas, there are excessive descriptions of karma and jnana, according to the logic of Bumna Yapadesha Bhavanti, wherein the title of a work is based on what is prominent in its composition. The Vedas are therefore called Raigunya, pertaining to the three modes of nature. Only Bhakti, however, can take one to Sri Bhagavan. This is the verdict of the Matara Shruti. The Svetasvatara Upanishad states, Yasya Deve Para Bhaktir Yata Deve Tata Goro. The meaning of the Vedas can only be revealed through one who has the same transcendental devotion to both Sri Bhagavan and to one's spiritual master. Devotion that is free from the contamination of material nature is the only subject matter of the Smritis, such as the Pancharatra and the Upanishads. This includes the Gita Upanishad, Bhagavad Gita, and the Gopala Tapani Upanishad. If it were accepted that Bhakti is not described in the Vedas, Bhakti would become unauthoritative. Therefore, Krishna directs Arjuna to become free from the Vedic injunctions promoting jnana and karma which are under the influence of the modes of material nature. He tells him not to perform them, but to always follow the process for achieving bhakti, as stated in the Vedas. It is mentioned in Brahma Yamala Purana, the pretentious display of exclusive devotion to Sri Hari, in which the process of Pancharatra, ritualistic worship, recommended in scriptures such as the Shrutis, the Smritis and the Puranas is neglected, results only in eventual disturbance. This mistake or fault is inexcusable. Those subject matters of the Vedas that pertain to the modes of material nature, Saguna, and those that are beyond the modes of material nature, Gun Atita are called respectively Dragunya within the three Gunas and Nishtraigunya free from the three Gunas. Sri Krishna says Of the two pursue only Nishtraigunya, become free from the three Gunas by the influence of my Nirguna Bhakti. Only then will you become free from dualities such as honor and dishonor. Therefore, remain exclusively in the association of my devotees who are always situated in eternal transcendence. Here, 
The explanation of how to become situated in pure transcendence, Vishuddha Sadvaguna, will contradict the explanation on becoming free from the three modes of material nature. To achieve that which is lacking is called yoga, and to protect that which one possesses is called kshema. By the word near yoga kshema, Sri Bhagavan is telling Arjuna to become free from the concern for both yoga and kshema. Upon becoming overpowered by a taste for my bhakti rasa, achieving both that which is lacking, yoga, and protecting that which one possesses, kshema, will not be a cause for concern. Sri Bhagavan states in the Gita 9.22, I personally carry what my devotee lacks and I preserve what he has. He is displaying his affection for his devotees by stating, Because I carry the burden of their maintenance, there is no need for them to separately endeavor for it. Atmavan means become a person endowed with intelligence granted by me. Now, the words Nishtraigunya and Trigunya are being discussed. In Srimad Bhagavatam 11.25 to point twenty three to twenty nine it is said Mat Arpanam Nishpalam Va Satvikam Nija Karmatat Rajasam Pala Sankalpam Himsa Prayadi Tamasam Srimad Bhagavatam eleven point twenty five to twenty three No that action offered to Sri Bhagavan without the desire to enjoy the fruits Nishkama Karma is in the mode of goodness. That action which is performed with a desire for the fruit is in the mode of passion, while action performed with violence or envy is in the mode of ignorance. In the above verse 11.25.23 Nishpalam Va implies that occasional duties, Naimitika karma, are performed without fruitive desires. Kevalyam satvikam jnanam raju vaikalpikam cha prakritam tamasam jnanam man nishtam nirgunam smritam. Srimad Bhagavatam 11.25.24 Knowledge related to the self which is beyond the conception of the body, is knowledge in the mode of goodness. Knowledge related to the body, which, through the false conception of I and mine, one considers oneself to be the doer and the enjoyer, is in the mode of passion. Knowledge of inert matter, the mundane world, or the body, is in the mode of ignorance while knowledge related to me is transcendental, beyond the modes of material nature. Vanam tu sattviko vaso kramo rajasa ujjate tamasam yuta sadanam man niketam tu nirgunam Srimad Bhagavatam 11.25.25 25. To live in the forest is in the mode of goodness. To live in the village is in the mode of passion. To live in a gambling house is in the mode of ignorance. And to live where I live, the temple, is transcendental, beyond the modes of nature. Sadvikaha karako sangi ragando rajasaha smultaha tamasaha smulti Viprasto Nirguno Mat Apashrayaha Srimad Bhagavatam 11.25.26 The doer, who is not attached to the result of his action, is in the mode of goodness. The doer, who is blinded by attachment, is in the mode of passion. The doer, 
who has lost his memory, is in the mode of ignorance, and the doer, who has taken complete shelter of me, is transcendental. Sadviki adyatmiki shradha, karma shradha tu rajasi, tamasi adarmiya shradha, mat sevyam tu nirguna. Srimad Bhagavatam 11.25.27 Fate, related to the self, is in the mode of goodness. Fate, related to action, is in the mode of passion. Fate, related to irreligious activities, is in the mode of ignorance. And fate, related to my service, is transcendental. Padyam putam anayastam ahariyam sadvikam smritam rajasam Chandriya Preshtam Tamasam Charti Dasuji Srimad Bhagavatam 11.25.28 Food that is wholesome, pure and easy available is in a mode of goodness. Food that is pungent, sour and gives pleasure to the senses is in the mode of passion. Food that is impure and the cause of misery is in the mode of ignorance, and that food that is offered to me is transcendental. According to Srila Shrita Swami, the word ja in this verse, Srimad Bhagavatam 11.25.28, means that which is offered to Sri Bhagavan is transcendental or nirguna. Sadvikam sukham atmotam. Vishayotam tu rajasam, tamasam moha denyotam, nirgunam mat apashrayam. Srimad Bhagavatam 11.25.29 Happiness that comes from the self is in the mode of goodness. Happiness that comes from sense objects is in the mode of passion. Happiness that comes from delusion and depravity is in the mode of ignorance, and happiness that comes in relation to me is transcendental. After explaining objects that exemplify the three modes of material nature, in the above mentioned Srimad Bhagavatam verses 11.25.23 to 29, Sri Bhagavan further explains how to attain perfection in realizing the nature of an object that is beyond the three gunas. He says that only by performing bhakti that is beyond the three modes of material nature, nirguna bhakti, can one conquer the influence of the modes or gunas that exist within oneself. This is stated in the following verses. Dravyam dejaha palam kalo Jnanam karma ca karakaha, shradha vasta kriyir nishta, traigunyaha sarva evahi. Srimad Bhagavatam 11.25.30 Everything material, such as the substance, place, results, time, knowledge, action, the agent, faith, situation, form, and determination are all within the jurisdiction of the three modes of material nature. Sarvegunamaya bhavaha purusha vyakta dishtitaha drishtam shrutam anudyatam pudaya ba purusha shabaha. Srimad Bhagavatam 11.25.31 O best of human beings! Whatever states of being that are heard, seen, or conceived of that exists between the Purusha, the enjoying self, and Prakriti, material nature, are comprised of the three modes of nature. Etaha, sam shritayaha pumsho, guna karma nimbandanaha. Yeneme nirchitaha 
Somya Guna Jivene Chitta Jaha Bhakti Yogena Manishto Mat Bhavaya Prapadyate Srimad Bhagavatam 11.25.32 O gentle one, all the material conditions of the living entity are born from action performed in the three modes of nature. Only those living entities who by practicing Bhakti Yoga have conquered these modes become endowed with nishta or steadiness of mind and are able to attain me. Therefore, only by bhakti that is beyond the modes of nature can one conquer the three modes of nature. This is not possible by any other means. In response to the question asked in Gita 14.21 Katam Chaitams Tri Gunaha Trin Gunan Ativartate, how can one conquer the three modes of material nature? It is later said in Gita 14.26, Mam Chayo Yabi Charena Bhakti Yogena Sevate, Sagunan Samatit Yaitan Brahma Buyaya Kalpate. Only those who render service to me with one-pointed devotion, can transcend the three modes of nature and become qualified to realize transcendence. In this commentary on the verse, Gita 14.26, Srila Sridhar Swami says, Ja is emphatic. That is, those who exclusively perform unblemished and unflickering devotional service to me the Supreme Controller, or Parameshwara, can conquer the modes of material nature. Sar Ardhavarshini Prakashikariti The four materialistic pursuits of religiosity, dharma, wealth, artha, sense gratification, karma, and liberation, moksha, are called chatur varga, the four goals of human life. Bhakti is the fifth goal. Although the Vedic scriptures have described the paths of karma, jnana and bhakti as various practices for the jivas, one can only attain Sri Bhagavan by giving up all other paths and engaging exclusively in pure devotion. This is also made clear by studying the following two verses from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhaktiaham ekaya grayaha shradhayatma priyaha satam bhaktihi punati man nishta sva pakan api sambhavat Srimad Bhagavatam 11.14.21 I can only be attained through bhakti that is performed with full fate. I am naturally dear to my devotees, who take me as the exclusive goal of their devotional practices. Even the dog-eaters can purify themselves of their lower birth and ultimately attain me by performing devotional service to me. Na sadayatimam yogo Na Sankyam Dharma Udhava Na Svadhyayas Tapas Tyago Yatha Bhaktir Mamor Jita Srimad Bhagavatam 11.14.20 O Udhava, Yoga, analytic philosophy, study of the Vedas, performance of difficult austerities and charity cannot control me as does exclusive devotion to me. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, The scriptures contain two types of subjects, Udishta and Nirdishta. The highest goal of a scripture is called Udishta Vijaya, and the instructions that indicate the Udishta Vijaya 
are called Nirdishta Vishaya. For example, because the Arunadi star is dim, it is very difficult to be seen in the sky without assistance. If someone's objective is to see it, his indicator will be the biggest star closest to it. So if Arundhati is the subject, the Udishta Vishaya, then the biggest star closest to it is the Nirdishta Vishaya. All the Vedas indicate that the absolute reality beyond the three modes, Nirguna Tattva, is the subject matter of the Vedas. It is the Udishta Vishaya. But because that absolute reality cannot be understood immediately, the Vedas first describe Saguna Tattva, which is the Nirdishta Vishaya. Maya, consisting of the three modes of nature, namely goodness, passion and ignorance, initially appears to be the subject matter of the Vedas. Sri Krishna therefore says, O Arjuna, do not remain entangled in this Nirdishta Vishaya. Rather, attain the transcendental entity, or that which has been indicated to be the real subject matter of the Vedas, the Udishta Tattva, and become free from the modes of nature. Some parts of the Vedic literatures have prescribed karma based on the modes of passion and ignorance. Other parts prescribe knowledge based on the modes of goodness, and specific parts explain the practice of pure bhakti, which is free from the modes. You should attain pure spiritual existence by becoming free from dualities such as honor and dishonor. In other words, by associating with my devotees, renounce the endeavor for acquisition, yoga, and preservation, kshema, sought after by the processes of acquiring knowledge and performing prescribed duties, and become free from the modes of nature by the process of buddhi yoga.